What's going on my friends? I am Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U. Today we are going to discuss breakers and how to tell if a breaker is good or bad. Have you ever had a breaker go out on you or have you had a breaker that you couldn't really tell if it was good or if it was bad or somebody was like check to see if a breaker is bad and you're like I don't even know how to do that. Well, here's how. So breakers can go bad over time. Uh, certain brands of breakers go bad more than others. And I'm not going to just sit and crap on breakers. So that is not the <laughs> point of this video. Uh, but I will say that there are some common things uh, that can be tested with breakers to see whether or not they are good or bad. So in other videos, I've covered um, faulty breakers like old Federal Pacific stuff or Zinsco um, because a lot of them weren't tripping at certain values. So breakers are really designed to hold at 100% value. If you got a 20 amp breaker, should hold at 20 amps. But once you start creeping above that, there needs to be a point where it trips. So a thermal trip can trip at about 130 or more percent of its value. So for a 20 amp breaker that ends up being about 26 amps, once we hit 26 amps, sometimes it'll take a while for the breaker to trip, but around that point, it should thermally trip, um, which is kind of an overload situation or a little bit overheating of the circuit. This protects the insulation around that conductor from getting too hot and actually starting to melt. While it's not actually a short circuit or a ground fault, that's a massive impact. That's where the 200% value comes from. So at 200% of the breaker's value on a 20 amp breaker, we have 40 amps run through it, they would consider that a short circuit or possibly a ground fault. And that's a different situation that a breaker needs to trip, um, but it still needs to trip at those levels. So while we don't really have any way out in the field as an electrician to like simulate 130, you know, percent load um, or a 200 percent load, we do run into situations where we can actually try to trip a circuit and the breaker doesn't trip. So if it's not tripping, you know mechanically there's something wrong with the inside of it. Um, so how would we even test for something like that? So there's a couple of different ways that you can tell if a breaker is bad. If the breaker won't actually reset, if it's off and you try to flip it on and it just won't go into the on position or it hits the on position but trips immediately and you don't have any load hooked up. I've had breakers that actually do this in my hand, like brand new breakers. I will sit there and hold them and try to flip them and turn them on and they won't hold. Um, so there's something mechanically on the inside of the breaker that's wrong with it. Another thing that happens sometimes is a breaker will have kind of a mushy handle. So you'll go to to trip it or turn it on or turn it off and compared to all of the rest of the breakers around it, the handle just doesn't really feel like it's got any mechanical strength in the spring anymore. And a lot of times this will actually cause the inside of the breaker to trip when an event happens, but the handle itself won't move. Notorious for this is GE. A lot of the skinny GE breakers, somebody will report like, hey, I have the circuit off and we've gone out to the panel. We've looked at every single one of the breakers. They're all in the on position don't know what the deal is. So I'll go out there with my finger and I'll start tapping the handles towards the off position. I won't hit them hard because I don't want to actually flip them off. I just want to see if any of the springs uh, on the handles are just weak. And by tapping them a little bit, you can tell if a breaker internally is actually off because once you tap it, boom, it'll actually flip that handle over to where it's supposed to be in the off position. And then of course you reset the breaker and their lights come back on. So that's kind of a, a common thing that you run into with older GE breakers. Um, but it just means that there's something with the handle that's, that's messed up, even though the internals uh, of the breaker are fine. So that breaker should be replaced. Another thing to look out for are actual like physical damage to breakers. So sometimes breaker handles will be busted. People will still leave them installed which you can't turn the breaker on or off. That kind of seems silly, replace the thing. Um, but you can notice too, if you ever pull out a breaker and inspect it, whether or not there's any arcing happening between the contacts on the back of the breaker and the bus bar um, from any arcing or overheating. Sometimes you can see the backside of a breaker melting or the case of a breaker. If it gets way too hot, you know that there's something going on inside of that breaker and it should probably be replaced. Uh, other points where you can kind of see some like charring or arcing happening are actually at the terminal where the branch circuit leaves, where the conductor leaves and goes out into the field. Um, 
there's all kinds of different things with breakers that you can notice physical damage. And in those cases, it could be something internal in the circuitry of the breaker or mechanically with the breaker that's causing excess heating. It may not actually be something that's going on in the circuit, or it could be something that's going on in the circuit, which is causing this overheating to happen and the breaker internally is not tripping. So either way, probably have a bad breaker. It's good to go ahead and test that. Now, speaking of old breakers, we have some replacement breakers here from Connecticut Electric. <laughs> Sorry, I'm in a goofy mood today, people. Um, so if you have any old legacy panels like Federal Pacific, Zinsco, Pushmatic, Wadsworth, Challenger, they make all replacement breakers for those old legacy systems a lot of these you can find like home depot there's a link in the description below you can go to big electric supply and get them um, but anytime that you have like stuff that's just not not like normal you know like square d or ge things that like you can easily just replace because they're commonly made a lot of these are not made anymore the companies aren't even around so they're having to make brand new replacement breakers to put in so Go get you some replacement breakers for your old legacy systems at BigElectricSupply.com. Then there's other specialty kinds of breakers that have a little bit more specific things with them that could be going on with them. Um, for example, like smart breakers. Uh, we've done videos about smart breakers in the past, um, but smart breakers are usually remotely controlled breakers, meaning that somebody's gonna send a signal, some event possibly uh, could send a signal through low voltage, um, contacts on the breaker and actually cause the line voltage contacts to trip and actually trip that breaker remotely. Um, an event can do it, person can do it, there's a few different things that can happen. This goes for shunt trip breakers as well. A shunt trip breaker just is a breaker that is on a circuit but you have a secondary circuit 110 volts just depends on what the situation is but there's a separate circuit with a fire suppression system that if something happens it can trigger remotely this breaker to shut off it doesn't rely on the circuit that is going through the breaker to turn on and off um, but these are things that you know if you try to trip a shunt trip breaker and it doesn't actually trip the breaker then you know the breaker's bad same thing with smart breakers a lot of times you'll get a service call to go out and replace a smart breaker because it's not responding on the network they're trying to trip it remotely and it won't trip um, so there's just problems with those breakers that's how you know that they need to be replaced some other specialty breakers where they might have problems are things like dual function breakers in residential settings uh, or are arc fault or ground fault breakers they have a little test button on them and if you ever go to test uh, one of these breakers, which I recommend anytime you put in a new arc fault, ground fault, or uh, dual function breaker, make sure that you test the buttons on them. You don't want to install a brand new breaker and just assume that from the factory it's good. Most times it is, but sometimes you run into some bad ones. So when you install a new uh, breaker like that, you need to test the button. Sometimes when you push that little button, it's supposed to simulate a fault. And a lot of times it doesn't. Not a lot of times. Sometimes it doesn't. And lastly, this is probably the first thing that you're going to do out in the field to figure out whether or not a breaker is bad if it's just a standard general use breaker is using your multimeter if you go from the terminal where the conductor is hooked up to ground or neutral and you don't get voltage or if you have like a two pole breaker you know like a 220 load and you go between each one of those you should have 240 volts or 208 depending on what kind of wiring system that you're you're on but if you don't if you get like 120 volts or something weird you're like whoa why am i getting that and then you take one of them and go to ground and you find that you have zero volts that breaker is not actually putting out any uh, potential it's not allowing current to flow because it's probably not connected inside there's probably some kind of gap or there's something in the contacts that aren't making a connection anymore and so that breaker needs to be replaced and i've actually seen this in two pole breakers as well as three pole breakers so if you're in a three phase environment every once in a while you have like a motor load or something and you'll end up single phasing a piece of equipment because two of the actual contacts will still allow power through but the third doesn't it's a very common problem in contactors and relays as well. You just have one of them that goes out. Um, so that can be something you should be aware of because anytime you single phase a three phase load, um, you're gonna create excess strain on that motor and you can actually burn up a motor. So it's a really serious thing to try to change that out as fast as you can. So that's pretty much it. I know very simple video, but there are people out there that have asked, like, how do you even know if a breaker is bad? If I have something going off in my house, 
I'm just gonna assume it's a bad breaker. And it's like, well, I mean, there's there's some things you kind of have to figure out. And a lot of times when an electrician walks up to a panel, we can open the panel and know immediately because of the brand or the types of breakers or the location the breakers are installed in, um, whether or not we think a breaker is gonna be bad. Um, and a lot of times you can't tell that a breaker is bad before you start pulling a multimeter out and be like, oh, whoa, there's something crazy happening. And then even yet, sometimes you have to dig it even further and take the breaker out and be like, whoa, that bus is messed up. And then you flip the breaker around and you're like, whoa, that thing's melted on the back. And it's things that from the front you would just have no idea about. So I hope that answers some questions. I hope that helps you guys out if you're troubleshooting out in the field. Uh, thank you for all the attention. Thank you for constantly supporting the channel. Support the channel if you don't already. Hit the join button, hit the subscribe button, hit the like. Uh, hit the little notification thing. Let's everybody know, or lets you know, lets everybody and you, you included, know every time a video of mine comes out. Um, thank you to all of the 480 volt members, all of the 1000 volt members, uh, all of you rad people for supporting everything that I do. Join the 1000 volts and you guys get my phone number. I've gotten probably, I don't know how many people now that text me all the time. Uh, everybody on the 4th was like awesome and thought of me and said happy 4th. So I appreciate all you crazies. Thank you. Love you people. See you soon. Best music and video.